Welcome to Think Glob, it's Friday Movie Reviews. The four of us just got back from Mad Max Fury Road. It is about 12.30 a.m. May 15, 2015. Today is the day the movie comes out, and uh, we saw an early screening. And with us we have Bailey Deal, Kendall York, Jasmine Weaver, and me, of course, Cameron Flatt. And to set it up, Bailey Deal has seen Road Warrior and Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. Oh, God. Same with Kendall. Jasmine has not seen any of them. I have seen all three of the original movies. Comment section, go easy on that one. <laughs> so pretty much to give anyone who doesn't know some context, Mad Max is a trilogy of action movies from the late 70s and mid-80s starring Mel Gibson about a man traveling the roads of post-apocalyptic Australia as he battles mostly biker gangs. And this movie is technically a continuation, but starring Tom Hardy, but is directed by the original director, George Miller. So technically a continuation, but sort of a reboot at the same time. So to explain our rules for our movie review today, each person will get a chance to talk their piece and their opinion on the film. Each of us will have one interruption per critic, and to interrupt, we will clack our movie clacker, or whatever the official name is. So, Mr. Deal, please start us off. Oh, oh, okay. So, Mad Max Fury Road, I really, really, really like because it feels like a Mad Max movie. Tom Hardy, <laughs> he, he is Mad Max. Uh, let's be honest here. He felt like Mel Gibson revamped, and... There's no Mel Gibson in this movie. Ah, I really don't care. But Tom Hardy steps up to the plate and does a fantastic job. The acting is my favorite part overall. They capture an essence of the movie that I enjoy. I enjoy actors who can who can get up there on on camera and just have a blast and they take everything seriously, and they don't try to stray about and, you know, like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, this is a Mad Max movie, don't take us too seriously. They do take it seriously, and you can tell they've all watched the movies to heck. They've memorized quotes, or they've researched every little bit of the movie. There are some problems whenever I was looking at that. There are a few characters who... I'm not going to try to spoil anything, but they have a sudden change of heart, and it just felt really, really weak to me, and it was just because they like a girl, or because, you know, they got hit in the head, and so something stops, and it's... Go ahead. Okay. I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and put a spoiler thing at the top of the screen while I'm talking, and I'll take it off as soon as the spoiler's done for anyone that actually cares. What are you talking about? is, I don't know the actor's name, but he played Beast in the new X-Men movies. He works, he's a minion of the of our villain who portrays himself as a god and all his minions believe he is some sort of god. And they, it shows actively that these people will die for him no matter what. So, this guy is constantly failing and his third, the third time he fails, he has been given a task, he is handed a gun by the villain and immediately fails. It's a hilarious scene. And then it's after that that they find him on top of the rig that they're driving. And that is when he switches over to their side. It's, it's like the 80s movies. You know, like the sudden turn where it really has that no explanation. That kind of style. <laughs> style of acting and writing. I don't care about the clicker. The clacker. <laughs> Oh, sorry, well, I forgot the, my, my final uh, point against your point is I felt that it wasn't sudden just because it was established these characters were devoted to this guy. He fails. His life is pretty much over, so his motivations are going to instantly change because his outlook is different. That's my opinion. I mean, they kind of explained a little bit with the dialogue with the other characters. He was my favorite character overall. I always love the villainous kind of role, the really slimy kind of comedic relief. But I just still feel like his transition was super weak. Right. One way or another. But give us your give us your final no, piece. 
I did say what I didn't like the, the switch. Uh, the, okay. the, the little bits of character motivation, but it's super nitpicky. The movie is excellent. I say go see it in theaters. 3D is up to you. There's like We did only, not see it in 3D. There's only Important one up. good part that I think would be cool in 3D. Yeah, but we're actually flipping. Even, even then, uh, I give it an A-. minus. Okay, Mr. Kindle, you're next. Well, I, I, uh, I could pretty much say I keep it short and sad with everything you said. But Okay, uh, well, but I'll, I'll, I'll give my opinion. All right, cool. Sorry, I'm <laughs> not good with camera stuff. So. Well, if, if you, it's a great homage, more modernized version of an 80s action movie style. Well, I'm sorry, it's pretty much an action movie these days done right. <laughs> Unlike a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> Transformers. There's so much character development. We actually like likable characters on like Transformers and I like when the, pretty much the whole movie was a chase movie. If anyone walk wants to, but yeah, which uh, like I thought the effect I love it's one of the things I love about it, also one of the things I hate is the practical effects. Sometimes they look a little fake with the modern, really bright, beautiful cinematography kind of makes it look a little fake compared to old older like 80s movie cinematography looks kind of grainy and not so pretty which kind of makes the effects look a little bit more okay. real. I'm going to check real fast. Right. Okay, not opinion necessarily. Just for anyone that doesn't understand what cinematography is, it's pretty much how everything looks. It's the, the coloring, the it's lensing, it's the different lenses okay. that are used, different angles. It's pretty filters, much like Instagram filters. Exactly. That's a very good analogy. So pretty much the, how the colors are, everything you see that's not physically there or computer generated is cinematography. Just the feel of the movie. Continue on what you were saying. That's pretty much it. I and mean, then I, I definitely say do not see 3D. Screw that. That's just a waste of money. But seeing the theaters is up to you if you love action movies. Probably want to, uh, according to the talk here with uh, Jasmine, you probably don't want to take a date to see it. But. But also, I also, if not going to see in theaters, sit, sit on the biggest flat screen you can with good surround sound to have a bunch of buddies. It's like kind of movie to see on the weekend with some buddies on a flat screen TV. All right. Awesome, so. awesome. All right, Jasmine, go ahead. I'm just going to hold this. No, uh. <laughs> I'm just going to hold this right here. Oh, come on. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm on the fence about if I liked it or not liked it. So I could say what I liked and what I didn't like. Two separate things. Okay. Okay. Your main... I like the character development. How it's slow at first, and then it leads more and more into it. And I'm not going to spoil anything, because I hate when people do that. But it's me. I haven't seen any of the other Ma uh, Mad Max movies. And so... I didn't understand the character not talking as much. I was just rustling, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so very annoyed. Right I, 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 agree, I agree with that, don't worry. Okay. Like, I'm used to characters talking whenever I watch a movie and being able to understand them. That was one thing I didn't like. The action sounds and everything. Oh. My opinion, best kind of character is someone who an actor can take on and not say much. That's hard But hurt. still draw the audience in and connect to them. He doesn't say much because he doesn't trust anyone because he's lived in this wasteland for so many years and he's been through so much. I've never seen so, it. I'm just saying. I know. You've never, you've never seen it. And so you come in, but you've got to appreciate an actor who can draw you in with... Here's the thing, I wasn't as drawn in as I thought it would be. You weren't drawn in to Tom Hardy? No, I was more drawn, well, I mean, I noticed that him and his character from Batman. There's uh, so much facial expression with Tom Hardy, like you're saying, he has, you can actually yeah. tell what he's thinking and feeling, which very actors can do that, very good. Not that many movies can do that, but there you go. Okay. But it didn't draw me in. Me, my opinion is, you know, any character can, you know, be quiet, and the fact I haven't seen any of the other, the other ones is definitely contributing to me not liking it as much. I'm sure if I knew more about the character, I'd be fine. But I was, I'm a very vocal person, so that's what, 
No. Yeah, you got one. You got your one. Got no. You're done. Whisper no. it in his ear. Whisper it in his ear. You know what? I have my opinion. I'm a girl. I haven't seen any of the other ones. I have a very weird opinion in the fact that, you know, it's an action movie. I love action movies. I went and saw... Oh my gosh, why am I drawing such a blank? Kingsman. Kingsman. I loved that movie. Great action movie. Great character development. Don't know anything about them. Just like... Just like with this, but they didn't talk. Something about them not talking. And when they do talk, the stupid action sounds are overlaying their voice. And they're speaking. I hate when they do that. I was agreeing with you. That was... Mike, turn. Mike, turn. Well, I screwed up mine, so. <laughs> it's your fault. Bailey! Hi. I'll okay. get up and speak. <laughs> That was the main thing you did not like about the movie. Okay, I didn't like that the voices. I couldn't hear the fuck. <laughs> Jump cut. I could. <laughs> there are some problems with shooting in the middle of the night okay, in a yard. I couldn't hear the voices. Whenever I did hear them, it was mumbled or it wasn't as important as I thought it would be. Or I do like. I have one interjection. You say that you like the character development. It was slow at first, and it carried on. Totally agree. But, but, but you're also saying, you also said in response to them that you didn't really understand who Max was because you didn't know going in. So, yeah. are you saying the character development of everyone else other than Max? I mean, all of it was pretty good. I mean, for not knowing who a character was and then getting a development, okay, well, you can tell just by at the beginning he's a loner. Two, one, he's a loner. Two, that he's interested in the better for people because he immediately jumps in. He, he wants to be the hero in a way. No, you cannot have another turn. Mm. <laughs> he is not an anarchist. He is a vigilante in a way. Hey, Tom. Mm. Okay. But that's just how I see Give it. your final thought. I'm not done. I have a big talk for you. Let me be. Well, you, you have had You're gonna get enough time cut. as the rest. You can... I can get jump cut. <laughs> I'm just we will Hi. link her YouTube video. You can post Shut up. your own video. Shut up! And do the rest okay, of your Okay, I'll review. get my final yeah, word. Yeah, I will hear Give us your final here. word, please. My final word. Good movie. Good character development. Need to work on the sound quality. And I... Why not go see it with a date? Laugh your butts off at how much you want to debate about it like we do. Okay. So... I rating I would give it... Plus. Okay, so right off the bat, I will say that I am a huge fan of Mad Max 2 Road Warrior. I think that's a, one of the most perfect action movies ever made. And I think that this is almost the same movie from how the story flows to just, I don't know, most of the story flow, but how the action is oriented, how it's all based around kind of a rig, trying to run away from bad guys, and how Max is helping people escape bad people with one. Benevolent leader. Benevolent. It's very similar to Road Warrior. And I like that and I don't like that about it. My main thing that I love about this movie is it is absolutely gorgeous. Pretty much anything bad you have to say about it, this movie just visually stunning between the cinematography, how honestly colorful it is, and that colorfulness makes it everything that's supposed to be gross looking, which is just about everything, gross. So this world is post-apocalyptic. It is nasty, it's, there's blood, and there's mud, and there's oil, and you're supposed to hate living in this world. This is pretty much hell on earth. And you care for these characters because every living second is hell. And those vibrant colors make everything that's not vibrant seem just that much darker. And then, since there's so little CGI, those colors reflect off real substances, and you know those people are really on top of a rig running through the desert. People were actually falling off of that rig, um, shooting real objects. Everything just looks so real. And then the CGI, at times, is a little bit fake looking. But when it's not looking fake, it's hard to distinguish aside from real things. So my main thing that I love about it is it's gorgeous. Every frame you watch is a painting, which is what film should be. What I don't like about it, though, is that there's this is gaping, lacking hole of a story. While it is it is similar in plot structure to Road Warrior, it doesn't have 
where we see Mad Max, or just Max, roaming the desert and stumbling upon someone he has to help, it just kind of, he's thrust immediately, which could have been interesting, but it just seems like the characters, there's so many characters going on, and I like the characters, none of them seem to have a lot of story to themselves, and it's, it's like Kendall said, one big car chase like Speed, which is, makes for a fantastic action movie, but it's the one thing that, for me, is stopping it from reaching greatness, is a lack of story that isn't really there. There's not a lot of story. It's a chase scene. So, you have something to interject? I do, but I don't want to <laughs> You guys are all lazy. I know. I didn't want to interrupt. I okay. agree, honestly. Yeah, I do. Okay. I agree completely with that. The story, there was given story about other characters. Mad Max, from what I could tell, there was not really a lot of story about him. I'm sure it was the previous one. But... That was the one thing. Whenever you go and see a movie, you want to see the story of the main character. His story was, okay, spoiler alert, doing on this for a He gets captured, gets taken on this, you know, because what is it? he's just taking, he's taken away. Used as a blood bag. Yeah, he's used as a blood bag. And then just, he ends up in the middle of nowhere just with these people. And then he's forced to be with them. And he gives no story about him before that, or after that, or why he is the way he is. I'm not finished, and you got to interrupt him, not me. <laughs> so yes, the story development was not there. Well, it, it was. was. There, it was there, but, but she just doesn't as, know it. No, it she, was does, there. she doesn't it realize as, it. Yeah. It was there, but it wasn't as much as you know you'd expect. That a voice over in the beginning, which I explained Mad Max backstory if you were paying attention. I was paying attention. It explains all of Mad Max's history. Yeah, it, it does. It explains in a few seconds. Think, Hi, my name is, it says, my name is Matt, my name is Max. It says, so here. you can, you can <laughs> understand <laughs> it. Like, pretty much it explains other movies in a few seconds with a couple dialogue. It's really quick. Very yeah, quick, but it Jeff. shouldn't have to do vague, that. It, exactly. It's very, very vague. If you haven't seen those other movies, you won't I get felt it. like, other than the fact that it gives a single line of something about Mad Max is trying to simply survive, other than that, which is just straight up gives you his motivation, you, it ma makes Mad Max lack depth for about the first half of it. I five it. I love you. But this is okay. for people that are fans of Mad Max. So. Well, exactly. No, That's what I'm saying for my non fans. No. Okay, I'm getting clacked. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Hobbit the Batter of Five Armies. They had a character kind of like that, which you hate. Legolas? No. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely Legolas. I no, it's that one guy who, who was... Who was... I, dark hair guy. I really didn't care for that guy. I forgot his name. Eugene or something. He was the one who had the gold stuffed in his bra. Uh, yeah. Like, Horrid character. I didn't care for him. Way, 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 off, way, off, way, off, <laughs> way off topic. Bailey, no, you're talking. No, sit down. Whisper it into my ear, I guess. No. Keep talking. You want to save your. Keep talking. Trust me. You want to save. Jump cut. Keep talking. What was I gonna check for that one? Sit down. Wasting our time. Film is expensive. Even though we're not filming. It's digital. It's a high film. We have this huge jump cut. Okay, actually, stop real fast. Make sure that it's still recording. If it's not recording, you're a good man. Yes, it is, but I'm going to.